welcome back to the Gypsy Bird Makes podcast. We are now on episode three, and I want to thank you all so much for your support. It means a lot. Um, I love seeing all your comments and just seeing the views on my videos. It's really fun, and um, I'm glad that you guys seem to be liking the content that I'm giving you. So I just wanted to give you all a big thank you. If you're a returning viewer or if this is your first time watching, thank you for tuning in. So today is April 2nd, 2022. Um, we are currently just outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. The weather today has been a bit chilly. It was about 60, um, but the pollen is fierce as always. Um, I've learned that North Carolina springs have a lot, a lot of pollen, um, like coat everything in yellow green pollen type thing. It's, it's something else, but we've been trying to stay indoors and keep all the windows closed so that we do not keep sneezing or having all the fun allergy uh, side effects that spring brings to, to us flakes. Um, so we have had a pretty, pretty low key month. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end, but I got a lot of knitting done and I'm excited to show you what I got completed. finished objects. I have five finished objects for the month of March, which is super exciting because I got a lot of things done. I started a lot of things, finished a lot of things. Um, yeah, I was really happy with how March played out. So a couple of the things that I have for finished objects, I don't actually have here with me because they've already been gifted, but I still want to go ahead and kind of talk about those and show you, um, show you what they were. So let's do that. The item that I finished first was the Precious Cow um, and it was a super fun make. I absolutely loved making it. Um, I can't can't recommend the pattern enough. It was super simple but looks so sophisticated and so pretty. I just love it. I made this for a friend for her birthday. Um, I picked out the yarn just for her and then the pattern and thought that they would go perfect together and would fit her personality really well. Um, and yeah, I loved it. It was so fun. And I got to use some new yarn. Um, well, it's been in, it was in my stash, but I bought it back in November, I think. Um, and it was Spun Right Round Classic Sock in Top Coat Candy. Um, and as always, all the details are going to be right here. Um, but yeah, I really was excited to try this yarn because I'd heard so many people other from other podcasts talking about spun right round and using it and everything and when I found it at a local yarn store in Raleigh um, I had to pick out a skein to use so um, I was happy to be able to use that um, and I really liked the yarn so I will definitely be using their yarn again the vibrant colors were really pretty sorry there's someone outside biking you can probably see there you go this is distracting me um, but I really enjoyed working with that yarn and we'll definitely use it again. Um, and my kids are in the back. I don't have a door to close because I'm sitting in the living room today. Um, so hopefully you can't hear them too much. Sorry about that. What else can I say about this? Um, I used all but four grams, which I thought was really, really fantastic. Um, I wanted to use as much as possible and I don't think I could have done another repeat um, with the four grams. I might have been able to, but I don't think I could have. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for something to use up a full skein, this pattern is definitely, definitely a good one because I have like itiest thinniest little yarn ball left. So that was the Precious Shawl, and I'm not going to even try to pronounce who that is by. I will have it on the screen and linked in my Ravelry oh. project page down below. Um, but yeah, that was my first one that I was really excited to get done. The second one that I finished was also a gift knit, and I also do not have it with me, but I have some footage of it that I will um, put here for you. Um, it is the Bronte Sister Shawl by Lindsay Fowler, and it is a beautiful pattern. Another one that I really, really enjoyed. I ended up making this for my mom for her birthday, which is today, actually, um, the day that I'm recording this. So um, 
she received it a couple days ago and really likes it so that was nice to be able to send that to her um, it was another project that I really really enjoyed making um, I loved how half of it was always stockinette and the other half had the lace and the uh, the complexity of that um, but I really really love lace work I think it looks beautiful and it's really fun and to knit and it kind of keeps you engaged um, and the Bronte sister shawl was really really nice in that aspect because um, half of it you didn't have to think about and then the other half you did so it was fun and the yarn that I got for this project was from Yarn Cafe Creations I had ordered it in February but didn't arrive until right after I filmed the last podcast Yarn Cafe Creations yarn is so beautiful and so soft. I've used it a couple times before and I always love her yarn. Um, so I knew that I wanted to use it for this shawl. And um, I've tried to pick colors as close to the uh, pattern that had, like the main picture pattern, because um, I just love those together. And I thought, I think I did pretty close with that. So um, the yarn was beautiful worked up well and it was a pretty quick knit actually I think I knit it in just under three weeks um, so yeah mm, I that was my goal that one um, those two items were my major goals for March to get those done um, because I knew they were going to be gift knits for birthdays um, and I really wanted to have those done and I got them both done within a few days of needing to have them done so that worked out really well um, but yeah, I really loved both of those and I'm kind of jealous that they're not mine. <laughs> the next sock or the next finished objects that I finished were socks. So I finished these, which were my daily socks. And these are by, uh, Summer Lee. I absolutely love this pattern. I talked about this last month, um, in my whip section. I used uh, Mama Jess Knits Fog on the Mountain yarn for these with a, how can I never remember what it's called when I'm doing this? Did I write it down? Yes. Shatter Wrap Heel. Thank you, Bethany, for writing that down. Um, but the Shatter Wrap Heel and these beautiful socks. I knit one sock in about 24 hours um, because once I got done with the shawl, I was like, I just want to knit something fun. So that was the sock. So I finished those. Um, really love um, Jessica's yarn. It's beautiful, knit up really well. Um, and I can't say enough about this pattern also. It's a really great pattern. Um, the texture on these socks, you can see, let me see. There we go. It's just so, so fun. And I messed up a few times. You might be able to tell like this row. I think I didn't do it exactly right. I don't know what I did, but you can't really tell when you're wearing it. Um, not. I haven't actually worn these yet because I was waiting for the podcast. Whoa, podcast woes. <laughs> but these I also finished. They were on my nails for just under a month, one day under a month. So really love them. I did 64 stitches and a U.S. size 2 needle for these, which is what the pattern called for. And then I also finished another pair of socks. I hadn't even started these um, for the last podcast. But these socks I made for my husband, and they are just some vanilla socks with a shadow wrap heel. Um, I really just felt the need to knit him some socks, and he really loves red. Red's his favorite color. Um, so I used my some of my Sorella Advent yarn. Um, there are three different reds from that um, Advent, and then I got this gray that's been in my stash for probably two years. Um, I got it from Sheep's Clothing Yarn Co., um, but they have since changed names, and I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I do have it linked down below for you um, where their yarn is, and I, I really liked the yarn. It worked up really well. It actually even has, this gray even has a little bit of a reddish tint to it, um, and that's pre-blocking as well. Um, but I think they turned out well. I told him he couldn't have them till after I podcast it. So he will be happy to get these. Um, but yeah, those were just some quick vanilla ones. 
these knit up really fast. I think I knit them up in like a week. So yeah, those were another finished object. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say about them. Um, and this, um, I love my sock blockers. So this is from Knitting Left. I don't know if she's doing sock blockers right now, um, but I'll have her linked down below. She's on Etsy. And these were her extra large size, which she doesn't normally have listed. You have to like message her and ask her about. Um, but I really, really love them. They're they're super smooth and my little moose. If you're a Supernatural fan, the moose not moose reference, maybe you'll get. <laughs> And then I have one more finished object. It's a big one. I'm so excited. Now this has been worn multiple times, so it's not in like peak, peak place, peak position. But I finished the hintermost cardigan for my husband. As you can see, look, he's been wearing it. The sleeves are ridiculously long, like so long. So I was making this and my dad's, um, Oxford cardigan like kind of at the same time and I did the sleeves with both the sleeves before finishing either either thing or either cardigan so I made both of the sleeves ridiculously long like both pairs hmm. I think I've learned my lesson now I hope so to not make sleeves ridiculously long like I think I I made them I think even if they hadn't blocked long they would have been a bit longer um, but now I know I need to make them a little shorter because they are going to block out pretty well. So, yeah. And I always forget, like, you do the sleeve and then you add it when you're, like, at this point. But then you have all of this part that's still going to go. So this is just, like, under your arm. Which there's still, like, quite a, you know, like, this doesn't need to. Anyways, I'm not making any sense. But it is finished. And I made this. <sighs> So I'm kind of proud. It looks way better on, on the camera. I love that. All right, so this was my first like big color work project. So since doing this color work, I have learned that you are meant to always hold one color in one hand and one color in the other hand and not to switch them because that will change the dominance of the color. Um, I didn't know that when I was doing this. So I'm pretty sure some parts I switched where it was supposed to be, you know, and it's not really what it's supposed to do. But I mean, for, I don't think it looks bad. I think it looks pretty good. Look at that. Yes. So these parts are what they like. I don't know what to think about those. Sorry if I'm hitting the mic. I always forget about that. But it's like they pull a little too much, but it's okay. My husband really likes it. He's been wearing it the last like three nights um, and really enjoys it. I did have pockets that are in here, which is super fun. Like that. I haven't blocked it since I did the pockets because I blocked it before sticking, um, as the pattern said to. Um, and then you add the pockets and you add this button band, which was something else, y'all. It was something else. Um, so I haven't really, I decided not to block it again and just let them have it. But it does have pockets and I tacked them down so they're not gonna be flying anywhere. But let's talk steaking. So this was my first steak and it was, wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. It was kind of like putting in an afterthought heel but on a grander scale. Um, that's exactly what it was like doing for the, um, the sleeve, their pockets rather. Um, it was exactly like doing a afterthought heel just for a pocket. Oh, I just pulled that out. Oh, well, that wasn't tacked down very good, was it? <laughs> oh, well. Anyways, um, so I did the steak. I did the crochet, um, the crochet method. I'll link down below which, um, which tutorial I used. Um, people in the Love and Stitches membership um, sent me some suggestions and I was really grateful for that. So you can see I used a different color yarn on the inside for my steak since it was my first time doing it. I wanted to make sure I could tell like what I was doing. 
Um, so I use this random yarn to do it and then cut it. And then, okay, this pattern, the hintermost cardigan pattern. And I don't, wait, yeah, I do. It's by Bristol Ivy um, and it's on Ravelry. It'll be linked down below and everything. I'm not a big fan of this pattern, to be honest. Um, I feel like it left a lot wanting. Um, like the pattern's written great. Well, no, I take that back. It's not written great. It's written for someone who's been knitting for a very, very long time and knows everything about knitting. Um, and for someone like me who had never stitched before or um, hadn't made a whole, whole bunch of garments, it was confusing and it was... I had to go and find out a lot of other fine tutorials to try to figure out what was being said in the pattern. So I won't say a lot since it is a paid pattern, um, but for the button band, you didn't, you know, normally for a button band, what I've done before is you pick up all along here and you go in big, like, you know, semi-circles almost, or semi-ovals, if you know what I mean. Um, but, and go back and forth, but with this one, you did not do that. You actually, you started from down here where there were stitches on hold and you went back and forth and back and forth all the way up until here. And then you kept those stitches live and came down and picked up these and did this side and then attached these and then mattress stitched these to the actual cardigan, which I found to be an, something that you, a little extra that you didn't really need to do, but it worked. It was just confusing for me. That's all I'm gonna say. Wasn't my favorite. Um, I don't know if that's common to do. I've never ever seen another pattern do that, but again, then again, I haven't done a whole, whole bunch of like cardigan type patterns, so maybe it is something that's common. It just seemed like it could have been a more easily done way, possibly. That's my thoughts. So I did take um, some video of me sticking and of the process of it all. So I will go ahead and insert that here. was me sticking. Um, wasn't as scary as I thought, like I said before. Won't be opposed to doing it again, just won't be doing this pattern. But I am so happy to have this off the needles. My husband is now using it and enjoying it. And yes, I'm happy that I'm done with it. <laughs> works in progress. So I only have one work in progress currently, um, which is kind of crazy. After I finished the Hintermost cardigan, um, it had been on my needles since October. And before that, the boxy had been on my needles since September. So it was so crazy to have those done and not have them on my radar or kind of feel guilty that I was working on something different and not working on those. Um, so what did I do? I signed up for a test knit, of course. <laughs> I was scrolling Instagram late one night and Cozy Up Knits had posted that they needed some more test knits, test knitters for their DK Brioche shrug or hug. And um, 
I emailed them and applied and I got accepted to be in it. So I was really, really excited. Um, I don't really have DK weight in my stash. So I went on Wool and Vinyl's website and ordered um, the skeins that I was gonna need for this. And she shipped it out super fast. I think, I don't know, I got it in like three or four days from ordering it, which was really, really fast. Um, I love her yarn. I got one skein last summer um, and tried, I worked something up and then frogged it with that yarn because it's so pretty that the project just wasn't right for it. Um, but yeah, her yarn is so gorgeous. So I'll talk more about the yarn that I got in acquisitions, but for this project, it is a DK weight um, and it is so pretty. So I cast this on and look, oh my gosh, it is so pretty. So this is going to be the DK Brioche, Brioche Hug by Cozy Up Knits. I think it's going to probably be coming out in June is what I believe. Um, but it's going to be striping. So I have like the main color here at the bottom with the ribbing. And then the first color here is this green. You can see it better on the wrong side. Um, so that is the green. And then I have just added the second color, which is this pink color. Um, and it's kind of going to do this block striping thing, but guys, this pattern is so fun. Um, I was a little worried about brioche because I've done two other projects with brioche, but it's been over a year since I did those. I did a pair of brioche socks and then a coffee cozy, which was awful, uh, but I did do that. That was my very first brioche project. Um, and then the, I tend to with my, I can't remember what it was with the socks. This, I had to go down so many needle sizes from what this pattern suggested. Um, I think it suggested a US 10 and I'm using a US 6 um, to get gauge. So yeah, it was a major. Here, let me show you. I do have my swatch because I swatched for it. So this is, yeah, which way is right? This is my swatch, isn't it pretty? So these are all the colors I'm gonna be using, starting with the green down here and then the pink, um, and then go up. But I absolutely love these colors. Um, and this was like my fourth time, I think, swatching it, because I started with like a 10 and then kept going down because my gauge was way, way off. Um, but yeah, I was a little nervous to be doing brioche. <laughs> It seemed really complicated, but I watched a couple of tutorials on Instagram of doing two color brioche in the flat, not in the round, but on the flat. Um, and I watched one by Stephen West, which cracked me up because he was like, look, your stitch has a little shawl. Make sure that your little stitch has a shawl and you're gonna knit it with the shawl. Oh my gosh, it was so cute. I was like, that is the best way to explain this is that your stitch has a shawl. like." How perfect is that? Um, so yeah, this pattern is amazing. I'm hoping to finish this um, this month in April and I cannot wait to wear it because it's gonna be so squishy and just so amazing. And then my little stitch marker, um, it'll focus on it, but it is by Deli Dino. Um, she doesn't do stitch markers anymore. Um, but this is the only one I got from her and I really like it. It's super cute. I think I got it for Shark Week last, or not Shark Week, Sock Week, which Nitty Natty does during Shark Week um, every year. So this was for that last year, even though I didn't get it till after Sock Week, but that's okay. It's still really fun. But I'm really, really loving this pattern. It's my only whip at the moment. So it's getting quite a bit of work um, put on it and yeah, I think it's going to look really cool when it's done. I can't wait. All right. Acquisitions. They might've gone a little overboard this, this month. <laughs> and by a little, I mean a lot. So I have quite a few things to show you. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's just start. 
So the first one is the Yarn Cafe Creations yarn that I got for the Bronte Sister Shawl. Um, they were perfect for it. I absolutely loved it. Um, I actually have quite a bit of them left. Um, well, let me see. How much do I have exactly? I have 49 grams left of the purple, 19 grams of the navy, and 14 grams of the oatmeal color. Um, the oatmeal color and the cordial, the purple, I'm going planning um, to use those for something else that I'll talk about in the next segment. Um, so I'm going to use those up probably pretty well. Um, but I really, really loved that yarn. It was beautiful and it was nice to put something in my stash that didn't sit there. Like I literally got it, wound it up and used it. So that was really nice um, to not have it just sitting there. And the next thing I got were these. They are from a store called Handsome Fibers on Etsy. And these are the Knitter's Pride Mindful Blockers. Um, I know you guys have probably seen these before where they're, they just help you with blocking. I have the rainbow set of these as well, but I always tend to run out and have to use the T-pins. Um, so I just bit the bullet and bought some more. Um, I really love them. And I've already used these to block my um, Bronte shawl, Bronte sister shawl. Another thing that I got for blocking, especially for the Bronte sister shawl, were some blocking wires. Um, I had heard of them before, but never used them. And I have to say, I am a convert. I love them so much. Um, they made blocking that shawl so easy. Um, yeah, I really love them and I won't block a shawl without them again. So those were from, um, a, let me see, where did I, It's So You Designs on Etsy. And I'll have every all the stores linked below for each product that I show you during this segment. Um, but yeah, big fan of these. Another thing I got next, hold on, let me take this off. Do, do, do. Okay, so I bought some mini skeins for a swap that I was doing, and I saw this and just had to have it. Um, it is Rainbow Peak Yarns in a Time Traveler. Um, it is super pretty. It gives me a huge, like, Doctor Who vibe, which I'm a big fan of. So this is her MCN Fingering, 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, and 10% Nylon. Um, so the, this I see probably getting wound up and used as socks soon. Um, yeah, it's really soft and really plump, which is my favorite type of, um, sock yarn. So that was the only skein of yarn that I ordered other than that isn't for a project. So I think that's pretty good. <laughs> the next thing is I got these. Um, these are a lovely homemade life from there they are little um stitch markers i guess is what you would call them the little round ones i love these um i've ordered from her before um these are like when you have to put a marker in for um beginning of round or for you know when you have your increases in raglan or something like that um these are the ones that i really like to use and so i got some of those um, I told you, I bought a whole bunch, so buckle in. This is going to be a, a while. And then my friend Jenny of Mountain State Stitches had another update. And what did I say last time? I said, I need another sock size bag, one of her smalls. So I got one. <laughs> I got this one from Jenny. I was really lucky to be able to get it. Here is her, her tag. Um... I love this one. It's so cute. Got black polka dots inside and I've been dying to use it, but I haven't because I was trying to wait and save it to show you guys. So here it is. I love it. Um, and I think I'm good unless there's a, you know, like a pattern I just have to have. I'm going to try to let Jenny's updates go without me buying it from them. We'll see. <laughs> And then I was looking for, um, in the 11 Stitches membership, um, which is going to be open, by the way, on April 4th. Yes, April 4th. 
So the day this goes up, it will probably still be open. Um, it's supposed to be open until Friday. But if you're looking for our knitting and crochet community that's really friendly, has Zooms, um, we do make-alongs, we do all kinds of things. If you're looking for that, um, I'll link it down below and you guys should come hang out with us because we have so much fun. Um, you sign up for three months, so this is quarter two and it will be from, I believe, let's see, it'll be April, May, and June. Um, yeah, and we have some fun make-alongs going on and some fun interviews and things happening, so you should check it out. But in first quarter, we did um, a PALS thing where we sent to a PAL um, and sent like first month we sent tea, second month we sent a pattern from Ravelry, and the third month we sent a stitch marker. So I was looking um, at all these different sites for stitch markers for, for my PAL, and I ended up finding too many that I wanted for myself. <laughs> oh, so I found these they're by three by the sea I'd never ordered from her before but I've seen lots of people who have ordered and are always so happy with their their purchases so I'm a huge fan of England of Britain anything English it's my jam um, most of my DNA is English so I feel like at heart I am a true Briton um, but I found these um, and they are just were too cute to not get. I really, really love the Union Jack one. Um, so I cannot wait to put those on project. I'm probably going to end up putting putting this possibly on my brioche, brioche hug. I was just waiting. Just waiting. So I got that from her. Didn't buy anything from my pal from there. Sorry. Um, but... Um, then I had to go over to Simply Serving, of course, because she always has the best. And her, I, that's where I did end up getting my pal her, um, her little stitch marker from, or progress keeper, I suppose. But I ended up picking up this one, which, if you are any type of anime fan, this is a soot sprite from a Ghibli movie. So my daughter really, really loves anime and little soot sprites. We actually have a little sticker of soot sprites on the back of the house as well. So this one I thought was just too cute to pass up. And if I was ordering something for my pal, I had to order something for me too. Um, so that's Simply Serving. Love that one. And then for my pal, I also got her some um, needle stoppers. I've been wanting to try these for a while, so I figured it was a good excuse. The ones that I got are these little like dice almost. My kids call them D&D dice is what they look like. Um, but they're, they're a lot larger than I thought they would be. But they're really, really durable, really cute. Um, and they have a little hole in one side, but my, my kids think they look like D&D dice. So I'm having to hide them from them. <laughs> and then also from there are these little, it's hard to see, but they're like, there we go. You put your um, needles in there and then they supposed to keep them from like coming apart. I don't know. I don't think I'm explaining that very well, but I haven't given them a try yet, but they look like they will do well. So I'll let you know how it works out. But those were really cute and I really, really wanted some of the stitch stoppers. And then I also got these, these were on sale and I'd had them, they came in a cute little tin. But they are some also some, they're little heart ones, kind of like the round ones that I got for stitch markers. Um, but they're tiny little heart ones. I'm totally not showing it well, but can you see the big finger in the way? Um, they're a little, they're not as sturdy or as um, thick as the other ones that I got. So I'm glad that they were on sale and I didn't pay like full price for them. But I think they'll do the job just as well. And I don't think you can ever have too many of those. And the last thing that I got recently, um, it actually just came in yesterday, is some stitch markers from Lock and Loom. I'm a big fan of hers. She's always makes such pretty things. And her shop update this week was so cute. So I got three. I got this little 
cloud. Oh my gosh, is that not the cutest? I'm trying to get you in the light so you can see it. And then I got two other ones. I got, let me show you. I hadn't even taken them out of the bag yet. This one, cute little heart with a rainbow. I love that. And then also this little flower. Whoop. There we go. How like how did they do this? It's so detailed and so so tiny. I would never be able to do that. But those just came in yesterday, so those are really pretty. And I just couldn't help myself either there. So bad. Okay, I really need to go on a diet and not buy anything else for a while. But this is what I got from my partner in the Love and Stitches swap. My partner was Helen Jo, and she sent me these adorable um, stitch markers. They were from England, and they're like tea, um, tea time snacks. Um, but aren't they so cute? I love it so much. Thank you so much, Helen Jo, if you watch. Um, they were just perfect. And these are from Chapel View Crafts, and they are in the UK. So, I loved those. The last thing I have to chat about is the yarn that I got for my, um, sorry, for my brioche hug. Let me get that. The yarn, I got seven skeins, which is a little saint. And this is in a, a bag by Jenny in Mountain State Stitches, one I got last month. So, let's see, I'll show you the yarn. I think I have a picture of them all together too that I might put up. But this is the first green that I am starting with. And I believe, let me see, this one is called, I think this one's Super Creeps, if I'm right. If not, I'll put it on the screen. But that was the one I'm starting with first, and I think I finished using that one. And then this one is Sweet Dreams Are Made Of This. And if you don't know, um, Woolen Vinyl names all of her colorways after rock band songs so I think that's pretty cool so this is the one I'm using now it is number two and then this one will be number three and it is called monster mash so pretty and then my final one is called lullaby and it's my favorite the purple I love that and then this is the main color that I am using throughout. Um, it is called, what is it called? Wicked Annabelle or Wicked Annabella. I don't remember which one. Um, but yeah, I think it's got that purple in it and it's, it's just gonna go and make it so pretty. So um, yes, and this is, let me show you. This is her, her tag, if anybody is interested. Um, her yarn is so pretty and like I said ships extremely fast so yeah those are my many many acquisitions <laughs> Looking ahead, in the month of April, we have a lot going on. Um, as some of you may know, I mentioned, I think, in the first episode that my husband is a travel nurse. Um, so we travel all over the U.S. Um, when he gets assignments, and his assignment is coming to an end here in the Raleigh area in the beginning of May. So we are currently applying for jobs and trying to see where we may be going next. So we are looking at places to park the fifth wheel, looking for, you know, the places that are paying the best and where we might be going and who we might be near when we move. So that's kind of what is happening with that. Um, so that will be something that's pretty big coming up in April. Um, so knitting wise, what I would like to happen in April is I'd like to finish my test knit. It's not due till June 1st, but with us moving and everything, I'd really like to get it done. And I feel like I just wanna wear it and have it and be done with it and move on to something different. <laughs> um, so yes, that is on, that's number one. Um, there are some socks that I wanna make with my leftover Bronte sister shawl 
yarn with the purple and the oatmeal I want to make the wisteria bloom socks um, so I'll probably be casting those on pretty soon um, they're really pretty and they have a little bit of lace work so that's gonna be exciting I also think I'm gonna be casting on some socks with my pal from the first quarter of the love and stitches membership Helen Joe we're gonna cast on some socks together um, she's back from her road trip, so I think we'll be doing that pretty soon. Um, and then I have a few baby items that I'd like to make this month. I have uh, my sister-in-law is having a baby girl in June, so I'd like to make her something. And then um, I also have a cousin who's having a little boy this month, so I will probably try to make her some hats or something like that too. Um, and my aunt asked for some dishcloths. So I shall be making some dishcloths as well. Um, but yeah, not too much that I want to cast on for, well, I mean, I just listed like five different things. They're all pretty small though. So we'll see. And I do still want to make that one, um, that one cardigan that I talked about last time, but the brioche one came along and I was like, well, I got to try that. So we'll get through it eventually. I had a new video come out last week. It was a day in the life video where I actually finished my hintermost cardigan and dyed my hair and did all kinds of crazy things. So if you didn't see that, you can check that out. Um, it's like 17 minutes long, so it's not very long, but it's kind of fun to see. I love watching other people and being nosy and seeing what their houses look like and things. So maybe you do too. <laughs> I mean, that's what YouTube's for, being nosy basically and learning anyways. But um, March was a kind of interesting month. Um, I ended up, I suffer with anxiety and panic attacks. And in the beginning, beginning-ish of March, I really started having a hard time with it. Um, I started having some pretty bad panic attacks and, you know, just feeling really, really crummy. So I had to work through that. It was about two weeks of pretty bad panic and just irris like craziness. It doesn't make any sense like at all. Um, but I was able to get on some more medicine for it and help that. So I feel a little better now. Not a hundred percent, but it was it was a struggle for sure. And I'm glad to be moving forward so that took a big chunk of the month away from me I feel like because I felt I don't know like almost fragile in a way like I couldn't do anything so I spent a lot of time knitting on the Bronte shawl um, and that kind of helped me with it keep my mind off of it and on to something else so I'm starting to feel better which I'm really really grateful for and just trying to move forward um, hopefully April will be much less anxiety field maybe we'll see but this month we were watching quite a bit of TV we were binge watching March seemed to be a really good month for Netflix to have um, new seasons come out on their shows so my husband and I watched the last season of The Last Kingdom, which was amazing. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Absolutely love it. Um, I watched 1883 on Paramount Plus, which oh, I loved it so much. Um, it was a Western. I grew up watching Westerns. Um, like I watched Quigley Down Under and man from snowy river from when i was an itty bitty thing so they've been ingrained in me to have that western style um so 1883 reminded me a lot of that um and i was really really sad when the season ended um but i really 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 enjoyed it i really wish they would make a second season of 1883 but i don't think that they're going to um but i do think they're doing a, a sequel kind of in the 20s i think is what i heard um so I'll look forward to that. Another thing is Bridgerton season two. I binged that last weekend and thoroughly enjoyed it. I am now reading the first book of the series. Um, it's actually a book club within the Love and Stitches membership that we're all reading it for the month of April. Um, I'm like on 
chapter three, but it's really good. And quite different than the the season was. So I like I like that as well. Um, so yeah, those were kind of the things that we binged. Oh, me and my husband also binged the last season, the or the latest season of the Great British Bake Off. Um, Oh, we were behind we're behind on so many different things but um, we caught up on that so that was really nice to be able to watch that while he was off work um yeah so that's kind of my tangent of tv shows that we watched i ordered my first advent of the season my friend natalie of blush yarns um she put her advent up for sale this past week um i didn't get her advent last year and then i kicked myself all through December because all my friends were opening them and they were beautiful and I didn't have it and I was quite jealous um, so I definitely wanted to get it this year um, so I got that advent and I'm also thinking of possibly getting um, fangirl fibers advent um, Natalie of Nitty Natty had it last year and it was beautiful I absolutely loved it um, so if I may end up getting hers as well but I definitely have Natalie's of blush yarn so I'm excited about that um, I just I did order um, from fangirl fibers her um, May the 4th be with you um, I don't know what it is exactly I know it comes with like three things of yarn I think I don't know it's like a kind of advent box type thing I don't know anyways I should get that this month and I can hopefully show you on the next podcast but I'm excited to get that. That'll be the first yarn that I get from her. Um, so I'll try that out and see if I want to get her advent, which I'm thinking I probably do. So, yeah. So that's all I have for you this month and this episode. Thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in May. Stop. We haven't even started yet. But the ones I got are these. Whoops. So I think that's all I have to tell to talk. Blah, 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 blah.